In this video, we're going to consider an optimization type problem. It's a maximum, a minimum type situation that is subject to a constraint. Suppose we have, um, say, a rectangle with sides x and y. And we want the diagonal of the rectangle See, so this is going to be equal to the square root of 3. Now, what value do we need for x and y so that the enclosed area of the rectangle is a maximum? So, we know, of course, the area is x times y. And then we have this constraint here that x squared plus y squared equals 3. And of course, the strategy in these types of situations is here we have something that we want to uh, find an extreme of, a critical point, uh, either a maximum or a minimum. In this problem, we want to maximize something. And then we have a constraint equation that's involved as well. Now, if you go to the website at digital-university.org and go to the calculus playlist and then scroll down to applications of derivatives, we talk about finding critical points by taking the derivative and setting it equal to zero. Then we also discuss the significance of taking the second derivative and determining whether that comes out as a positive or a negative because a positive value for the second derivative at the critical points, that's indicative of a minimum type situation. And when the second derivative comes out negative, that's indicative of a maximum type situation. And we covered all that background in those previous videos. So here, this equation is helpful to us because we can replace either the variable x with the variable y from this equation, or if we want, replace the variable y with the variable x from this equation and express the area uh, just in terms of one variable. So here we'll have that y will equal the square root of 3 minus x squared. So we'll replace the y with this expression. Say to the 1 half power. So now we can take the derivative of the area with respect to x. And that should be pretty straightforward to do. We will have this times the derivative of x, that's just 1. So we have, we'll just write it as 3 minus x squared, the square root of that. Then we will have plus x times the derivative of this. We take the 1 half down, so that's 1 half. 3 minus x squared. And the new exponent will be 1 half minus 1. So that's minus 1 half. Then we have to take the derivative of what's inside the parentheses. So you have minus 2x. We're taking derivatives now with respect to x. So have minus 2x dx dx, but that's just 1, so typically we don't bother writing that. So that is the derivative of the area with respect to x, and to find the critical points, we set it equal to 0, and then we go ahead and solve for x. So here we have from this term just the square root of 3 minus x squared. 
this one half and this two cancel, we have minus x times x, so that's minus x squared. And we have this to the negative exponent, so let's just bring it down here. The square root of 3 minus x squared, and this has to equal 0. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by this, and we do, we'll have this times this, that will be 3 minus x squared. Then, of course, we'll have the, the square root of 3 minus x squared, that'll be down here, so those cancel. So we have minus x squared equals 0. So again, all we did was multiply both sides of this equation the equation by the square root of 3 minus x squared and it gives us this expression. So we have 3 minus x squared minus 2x squared equals 0. x can then be equal to plus or minus the square root of three halves. Now we go back to our diagram. X can only have positive values here the way this is set up. So we can ignore the minus sign. And Y is equal to three minus X squared. X squared is three halves. So three minus three halves is three halves. So y also equals the square root of 3 halves. So we know that this value of x gives us a value of 0 for the first derivative. It's a critical point. But now does that mean that the area that we get using this value of x and this value of y, is that a maximum area or is that a minimum area? So really to answer that question, we have to take the second derivative of the area, put this value in, and determine then whether we get a positive or a negative expression. So let's quickly do that. First we'll make some room. Well, first let's write down our answers. We have x equals the square root 3 over 2. y equals the same thing. And we want to know then, when we use this value for x and for y, is that going to give us a maximum area or a minimum area? So our expression for the first derivative dA dx, that was equal to, we had 3 minus x squared to the plus 1 half minus x squared. Then we had 3 minus x squared to the minus 1 half. Now we want to take the second derivative and then evaluate that second derivative when x equals the square root of 3 over 2. And of course that's what y also equals. Okay, d squared a dx squared. So we take this down. We have 1 half times 3 minus x squared. The new exponent will be 1 half minus 1. That's minus 1 half. Then take the derivative inside of the parentheses. That's minus 2x. Then we have minus this times the derivative of this. So we have minus 2x, 
And let's just write this downstairs with that negative exponent. Square root of 3 minus x squared. Then we have this times the derivative of this. So we have minus x squared times the derivative of this. So we take down the minus 1 half. Then we will have 3 minus x squared. Now the new exponent will be minus 1 half minus 1. So that is minus 3 halves times the derivative of what's inside of the parentheses minus 2x. So here is our expression for the second derivative of the area with respect to x. And let's see what it gives us. Here we have these cancel. So we have minus x over that square root. And here we have minus 2x over that square root. So this will be minus 3x divided by the square root of 3 minus x squared. This is divided by the square root of 3 minus x squared with that negative exponent, just like this is. So minus x minus 2x is minus 3x over that square root. Now here, minus 1 half and minus 2, that's plus 1. So you have plus x minus x squared. So we have minus x cubed divided by, this is a negative sign, 3 minus x squared to the 3 halves. So this is the second derivative of the area with respect to x. Now when x is equal at the critical point, x equals the square root of 3 over 2. All we want to know is, when we put this value in for x, is this going to be positive or negative? We don't really care what the number is. We just want to know if it's going to be a positive or a negative number. Now, 3 minus x squared, that's going to be 3 minus 3 halves. So this is the square root down here of 3 halves. And here we're going to have x as a square root of 3 halves. The point is, is that this part right here is a positive number. And this is going to be 3 minus x squared. That's going to be 3 halves to the 3 halves power. That's a positive number. This is a positive number. It's a positive number times a minus sign. So we have then a negative number minus a positive number, or well, that's a negative number plus a negative number. This comes out to a negative value, telling us then that when we use this value of x that we determine from the critical point, that will give us a maximum area. And of course, by this equation, when x equals the square root of 3 halves, so does y. So we're guaranteed then that these two values here indeed do give us the maximum area.